Israel is considering how to respond to Iran's attack. The Israeli war cabinet has met twice since Saturday's aerial assault, but the government has yet to announce any definite course of action. Military Chief Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi has promised that Iran's aggression will be met with a response. But the Israeli media are reporting that officials are looking for a calibrated response that will hurt Iran without triggering all-out war. World leaders have repeatedly called for restraint. Here's a look at... A long shadow war that has come out into the open with Iran's attack on Israel over the weekend. Israel's government faces pressure from within the country to strike back at Tehran forcefully to maintain deterrence. The highest risk and most drastic step Israel could take would be to strike at Iran's nuclear program. That could quickly lead to a major escalation of the conflict. Israel is suspected to have attacked Iran's uranium enrichment facilities before, including in 2010 with a computer virus program that set Iran's nuclear program back years, but never officially acknowledged it. A step down in intensity would be airstrikes on Iran's oil facilities, military airports or other military facilities. Attacking oil targets might significantly rattle the world economy, and attacks on Iran's military could force Tehran to feel like it had to respond again. Tit-for-tat attacks that could lead to a regional war. In both cases, there are military and technical issues. Israel's stock of long-range ballistic missiles is low, and fighter jets would face a long and complicated journey to their targets, raising the risk to Israel even further. A third option is no official public reaction, but to instead take the shadow war back into the shadows. Israel is suspected to have assassinated multiple Iranian officials and nuclear researchers over the past decade. It also regularly strikes at Iranian proxies in Syria and Lebanon, pushing retaliation into this gray area without attacking Iranian soil would likely allow Israel to avoid the escalation its allies, like the U.S., have been trying hard to contain. Let's consider this with uh, Gerald uh, Feierstein, who is a senior fellow at the Middle East Institute in Philadelphia. Uh, welcome back to DW. Uh, how do you read where this conflict is now? Uh, tit for tat and honor satisfied on both sides, or has the escalation ratchet been tightened even further? It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be back with you. I, I think that it's a little bit uh, hard to see at this point. Uh, I think that the Iranian uh, statement after their attacks was that they've now satisfied their uh, their uh, requirement to uh, to uh, respond to the uh, Israeli attack on the uh, on the consulate, uh, and now it's uh, the ball is really in the, back in the Israeli court. Uh, we know what President Biden is counseling. Uh, he's said it publicly that he has advised uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, to uh, to take this opportunity to declare victory and go home, if you will, uh, but uh, but it's not clear that the Israelis will take that wise advice and and ratchet down. And if they don't, then once again you're in a situation where uh, it would be easy to get into a, as you said, a tit for tat scenario. So if Israel chooses then to respond, just looking at the last six months um, since uh, October 7th in its war against Hamas, Israel hasn't achieved its stated goals of destroying Hamas and rescuing the hostages. So would a war against a state like Iran be easier or harder for Israel to prosecute and win? Now, the Israelis have no capacity to prosecute a war against Iran without the direct involvement of the United States. Uh, and President Biden has said that we have absolutely no interest or desire uh, to, uh, to partner with, uh, with Israel on such a mission. Uh, and even uh, for the U.S., I think that uh, any kind of full military assault on Iran would be a very questionable uh, pro uh, program process. So uh, so the Israelis uh, can certainly uh, do something that will sting Iran, uh, but they uh, cannot go beyond that.
You think that would be a step too far for the United States because, you know, the world was pretty shocked about three weeks ago when Benjamin Netanyahu um, uh, responded to U US advice against going into Rafa by saying, um, we will uh, go in with or without US support. You think this is a completely uh, another level entirely? Well, uh, again, I, I think that there is a difference between uh, Netanyahu ignoring U.S. advice, uh, a strong U.S. views, which was certainly the case with Rafa. Uh, and I would note that uh, that despite his rhetoric, uh, Netanyahu has not taken that step yet. Uh, but uh, but again, uh, without the active involvement of the United States, uh, there is no Iran. Uh, you know, prospect that Netanyahu has, except for relatively minor strikes. So, uh, so there's a difference between uh, ignoring U.S. guidance uh, and trying to do something that is beyond his capability right. without the U.S. engagement. What should we make of the fact that this is the first time Iran has uh, attacked Israel directly rather than through uh, proxies? What do you think brought about this change? Well, I think it's a reflection of the fact that Israel hit a uh, an Iranian diplomatic facility directly. And in the past, of course, uh, uh, there was a degree of, of separation, if you will, an arm's length association. So the Israelis uh, might uh, might uh, hit a, uh, a Syrian target or a Lebanese target, but not uh, an Iranian, uh, you know, a, a clearly marked Iranian facility. Uh, and I think that on that basis, the Iranians felt that they needed to respond in like uh, in like way that uh, that since the Israelis had crossed a red line for them, they needed to cross a red line for Israel. Brief word about sort of how this affects domestic Israeli politics. Benjamin Netanyahu's fragile coalition government was facing criticism at home for its handling of this war and for not getting the hostages back and being criticised abroad for the mounting death toll and the humanitarian disaster it's causing. Does this Iranian attack change any of that? I think in the short term, uh, of course, it's taken people's attention away from uh, the underlying issues in Gaza, the humanitarian situation, the, you know, the uh, the military operations, uh, but I don't think that's a, a long-term change. I think that once the uh, the issue of Iran fades, uh, that uh, that the focus will come back onto right. what's going on inside of Gaza, uh, and uh, popular support will will return to a focus on that. Thank you for that, uh, that assessment. Very clear. Uh, Gerald uh, Firestein from the Middle East Institute in Philadelphia. Well, I asked a Middle East analyst, uh, Aaron David Miller from the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, for his thoughts on Israel's likely next move. I think there will be a response. Uh, even though the Iranian strikes um, on Saturday night caused very little damage. Uh, a new precedent was set, a new threshold was crossed, new rules were established. Uh, and I think the Israelis simply cannot afford to allow this to go uh, unchallenged. Uh, this was the first time in 33 years that a, another state, uh, 1991, it was Saddam Hussein, who launched 43 Scud missiles at Israel. So I think there will be an, Isra an Israeli response, but the reality is, um, I think your, your report uh, covered several of the baskets. The timing of this, the scale of it, the intensity of it, I think uh, is almost impossible to predict. And you pointed out quite correctly that it's conceivable that the um, response will be covert. Um, I suspect it'll be over, but, um, uh, and most likely I would think against conventional military facilities. Right. And so, are we therefore in an inevitable upward spiral of tensions uh, from this point, or does at some stage do, do does each side peer over the the the, uh, the the edge and look into the abyss and say, "All right, that's it, that's enough." Well, I mean, I, I would say to you that even if you get through this uh, current phase, which is really quite extraordinary, the strategic competition between Israel and uh, Iran is not going to end. Um, 
none of the problems that fuel this relationship, Iran's efforts to push U.S. military out of uh, out of the region, the fact that Iran is now a nuclear weapons threshold state, they have all the elements um, uh, to make a, a deliverable nuclear nuclear device should they decide to weaponize, and uh, their efforts to uh, influence regional developments through their proxies. None of this is going to be solved. And the Israelis clearly uh, are going to try to establish, reestablish some measure, measure of deterrence. Um, so I, I, I think, no, it is not inevitable. In fact, if I had to make a prediction, I would say that we are not headed toward what you and I would describe as a regional war. And let's be clear, that would almost invariably trigger Hezbollah's uh, inventory of high trajectory weapons, which frankly, unlike drones, uh, roughly it takes 12 to 15 minutes for cruise missiles to travel the distance from Iran to Israel. Uh, Hezbollah's got precision guided munitions uh, that could cover most of the uh, most of Israel. And there we're talking about minutes. So I think the Israelis want to avoid that. Um, but it remains to be seen whether or not they can find a way basically to do what Iran did, which presumably is to calculate a response between making this qualitatively and quantitatively different than anything the Iranians have done before on one hand, but not courting or triggering um, a, a response that would escalate into a regional confrontation. And so how is Saturday's attack likely to affect any hostage deal uh, between Israel and Hamas, which, of course, is part of Iran's so-called axis of resistance? Yeah, poorly, I'm afraid. Uh, I think that Hamas, Yahya Sinwar, who is in some tunnel somewhere, meters below ground, in Khan Yunus or Rafa, or maybe, according to Palestinian sources, maybe even in a tunnel, tunnel infrastructure in Egypt, um, I think Sinwar is under no pressure, no real urgency. The Israelis have basically wound down their ground campaign. Uh, they've begun to facilitate under U.S. pressure more humanitarian assistance. That's important for Hamas to maintain a post-conflict constituency among Palestinians. Uh, and I think Sinwar understands that his insurance policy to actually survive this uh, depends on retaining hostages. So I think um, and certainly if the Israelis strike and you get an Israeli counter strike, Hamas has no interest whatsoever. They want to see this play out. Uh, they want it on October 7 to spur regional confront, confrontation and conflict if possible. So they're not under pressure. And frankly, the Netanyahu government as well, uh, I think, isn't in, isn't in a hurry either, despite right. the pressure from understandable pressure from hostage families uh, to release them. OK, thank you for uh, walking us through that so clearly. Aaron David Miller from the Carnegie Endowment Pleasure. for International Peace. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, here in Germany, the government has strongly condemned Iran's attack on Israel, but Chancellor Olaf Scholz has joined other European leaders in calling on Israel to exercise restraint amid growing concerns of a wider conflict in the region. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is on a high-profile state visit to China. But now that has been overshadowed by the risk of a large-scale escalation in the Middle East. Scholz strongly condemned Iran's airstrikes. This was a very brutal Iranian attack. It was unprecedented and uh, it was the first time that they used missiles to go directly against the Israeli state. This is unacceptable. But echoing other Western calls for caution, the Chancellor also urged Israel to de-escalate the situation. Back in Germany, the opposition Christian Democrats said Berlin should be ready to put its money where its mouth is when it comes to support for Israel. If Israel is asking for armed and uh, arm, armament and ammunition from Germany, Germany should stay to its commitment and deliver weapons to Israel to make sure that Israel is able to defend itself. Germans are watching developments in the region with concern. Of course you worry about it, but I try not to think about it too much. They're all stubborn somewhere along the line. They can't manage to sit around a table and say, this is how we're going to do it. It's sad, but unfortunately that's how it is at the moment. 
But while diplomatic efforts to resolve Israel's war with Hamas might have dropped from the headlines, the German government says one of its top priorities is to ensure that the tensions between Iran and Israel don't escalate into a new war.